Hey guys, this is James Marzotto uh, coming to you from the beautiful Amsterdam, uh, Netherlands. I'm having a great time here traveling for leisure, having a lot of fun with friends, learning about the different cities uh, in Europe, and I thought what better idea than to start my own uh, renewable energy sustainability vlog. So welcome to video number one. Really excited about this video. Today we are going to be meeting with IBIS Power, or IBIS Power, uh, a Dutch firm that on the outside, from what I've seen already, is looking to change the way we power, the way we live in our high-rise communities. High-rise communities all over the world, the Netherlands, New York, Toronto, where I'm from, um, looking to change the way and make our cities even more sustainable. So I'm very excited to talk to the guys at IBIS, see what they're working on, see how their product, their concept is going to change the way we build our buildings, the way we power our buildings. It's going to be great. Thank you for staying tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for joining us. We are here with Alexander and Bart of Ebis Power here in Utrecht, the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, we're standing in front of the Power Nest. Power Nest that uh, Alexander and Bart have been kind enough to show me and uh, see how they are um, implementing this, how they've developed it, and what their plans are for the future and how it's sort of solving the problem of finally bringing uh, or being close to anyway, very close to bringing net zero uh, energy, uh, net zero capabilities to high rise buildings, not just in the Netherlands, but all over the world. So Alexander, uh, while we're here um, to start the video off, can you tell me a bit more about how IBIS Power has come to be, um, the solution you're trying to bring, and uh, yeah, how, how it all sort of started? How it started? Yes, thank you. Um, well. Uh, it's Power Nest, what we see in the back of, uh, mm -hmm. of us on this building. And Power Nest is a wind and solar combination, so generating from two sources. And we were able to integrate it into one structure, making it much more efficient. So we accelerate the wind flow mm -hmm. and we can use the whole roof for solar panels. And well, I was doing my uh, college, a PhD at the University of Miami. Okay. And I was seeing how much energy people use um, in the United States on a daily basis using air conditioning. Well, there was so much sun and wind around. And I thought, wow, that's a ridiculous situation. Mm -hmm. Six million people living in Miami. Mm -hmm. Big city. And, and the whole city running air conditioning at the same time. So there's so much sun and wind around. And I thought, we have to do this different. So I, uh, in my studies, I learned that you have to design a building protecting it from the weather conditions, basically making bunkers. Okay. And so I wanted to break with this tradition, open the building to its environment, let the wind flow through the roof, solar panels on top. And, and in that way, you know, I did my calculations and that wind part seemed to be very efficient. So that's actually how it all started. So it, it, I was very well supported by the University of Miami. Okay. Uh, we worked for two years with them. Uh, then we got grants from Europe to uh, further develop this. We work with the Eindhoven University of Technology. And now we're uh, many years further, but uh, our first two installations are, uh, are real. And uh, we're placing many, many buildings. And through all the developments over the years, uh, we are able now to supply up to 12 to 14 stories of a building mm -hmm. with putting this solution on top. Curious to know like, about this particular system. Can you tell us um, about the particular specifications? Um, and I guess, yeah, the specifications, what it's doing for the building right now, even as we speak, what, what is it generating even? And uh, also, you know, since this was your first installation, um, you've probably learned a lot uh, on the installation process, working with the client, with the customer. What are some things that you've learned um, yeah. with this one in particular? 
Yeah, great que question. Um, this is indeed our first testing unit. Uh, we tested it first in a harbor area uh, just to get all the validation on the energy uh, specific, so how much it can generate. Um, in numbers, um, the, the solar part is usually fixed. So in our standardized sized unit, 7.2 by 10.8 meters, okay. um, the solar part generates 11 megawatt hours. Okay. Now, which it comes from 40 solar panels. We, you can add the wind to that, and then the total system can generate between 19 and 30 megawatt hours. So 19 is inside a city, more land inward, and if you're coast frontal, okay. there's much more wind, and then you generate 30 megawatt hours. Now, in the Netherlands, apartments use on average two megawatt hours per year. Okay. So I would say, well, 12 to 14 is what we usually can offer to buildings okay. uh, by average. Um, so 12-story buildings can be fully supplied. Now, what was interesting to learn here is, uh, well, we're still measuring here the energy because we, got, we will measure energy everywhere because we want to have all those cases. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the, the most interesting thing was how do the people feel here with having that thing on, on, their, on their roof? Right. Yes. And so we have Tineke living uh, under the power nest here, as you can see. Okay. And the most important, next to all the acoustic reports that we did, etc., the most important is, is her experience of not hearing the turbine, not having any annoyance of vibrations or... Because usually when people come, they are looking at the turbine, it's spinning, and they're like, why don't I hear anything? Mm -hmm. Because this somehow got in the mind of people that wind turbines create a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And they start to feel it like, oh, there's no vibration. So how mm -hmm. is that possible? So those are the interesting part that came out of this uh, test. Okay, cool, cool. Where so there no are, complaints. Whether I think there is another funny fact to it is that what Alexander just told that it was in a harbor first. Uh, now we've installed it on this roof. And what we actually see is that first when we uh, uh, brought PowerNAS out, is we said you can use it to 60 kilometers land inwards. But now we found out that, that you can put it as far land inwards as possible as long as you got the wind. It's actually interesting to see that like it could have been built with the building. like it. It matches the landscape. It, it looks part of it. Um, nothing too out of the ordinary, I guess. So, but uh, I guess what I'm curious to know now is, you know, you, you have your two your two concepts up now. Obviously, we're talking to a lot of people about the future, uh, and then also I've been you know looking into a lot of what the Netherlands is doing, just with sustainability as a whole for the country, excelling you forward and and, and not just making buildings net zero but the whole country maybe net zero at least close to it um, can you guys tell me a bit more about how I guess power nest fits into um, the society uh, societal goals of, of the Netherlands let's say in particular and uh, and yeah sort of your future uh, moving forward in the next five ten years with this great product this great concept yeah absolutely and I, I think it's really important um, the Dutch government is really 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 making big steps now they got the point that the society needs to start doing things in a different way okay. so uh, we were very uh, dependent on gas natural gas okay. and the government has just decided to not use that in buildings and they won't allow it from this point on in new construction and all the existing construction has to transform to non-gas gotcha. So that's a really big thing, which is half of the energy consumption. Oh, really? Okay. That yes, exactly. Huge. For heating, yeah. That's very significant. Okay. Yeah. So Power Nest completely fits into that because you can put solar panels on a small house and then the, the area of the roof uh, fits the demand of the, of the, of the, of the small house. Uh, but when you go into any building that is higher than three levels, you're not going to get there with just solar panels. Right. So combining the two sources is the great solution. Right. And that's where we want to fit in. Um, so we have developed this uh, at this point for uh, the many apartment buildings that we have. Um, we have a tradition of social housing in the Netherlands and we have identified over uh, 2,000 uh, apartment buildings okay. which fits on average seven power nests, okay. which means we are uh, looking forward at producing 15,000 uh, power nests only in the Netherlands to make the first move. And this has wow. to be done before 2020. 
Okay, great. Wow. You yes. guys have a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do. So we're yeah. really, together with these housing associations, yeah. we are planning how we're going to do this. Utrecht wants an assembly line uh, here in the city. Okay. And yeah, so this is this is kind of what we're rolling into now, yeah. um, and and also internationally, we're already having um, a project uh, project preparations in New York and Boston. Uh, we have many projects now in Belgium, uh, looking in Germany, uh, China. We're working with people in Japan, uh, the Emirates. So it's going global and. What we see, uh, apartment buildings, every government is now understanding that we have to be renewable, we have to be sustainable. Right. I mean, there's no way back, basically. No, no. And, and I think there is a funny fact again, again, a funny fact to the Netherlands. Eh? If you look at the map and, and we got this climate agreement, which was signed in Paris a few years ago, uh, and actually uh, the Dutch government signed it, but the day after they opened the coal plant, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, mm. And now, uh, if you look at a, at a graph uh, on, on European countries, then you should look for the Netherlands and don't look with the first five, but rather go like the down okay. <laughs> five. So uh, yeah. actually we are uh, after Luxembourg, we're the baddest kit of the class, as we say okay. it. So um, that is also a point where the, the government now really starts to collaborate with us because they see that otherwise that they're really not going to make it uh, to be ready for um, out the outcome of the Paris Climate Agreement. Yeah, you, you could see it in our last election. Um, the government has been chosen two or three months ago. Yes. And I mean, the focus was sustainability. It looks like you guys are going to be very, very busy in the next uh, couple of years. Um, I'm really happy to hear that you know you get to sort of do the work in your own backyard for the next little while anyway and expand internationally as you do that's that's always comfortable I guess um, which yeah comes to my next point up it, it won't fit in your suitcase though, no 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 <laughs> it's gonna be tough it I mean it's it's pretty big it's pretty big it's big yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah no let's let's say we wanted to uh, bring it to Canada what would be the best way of uh, getting in touch I think uh, if you look on our website, it's uh, www.ibispower.eu. You can find all the information in. There is an information button. Uh, you can subscribe, send us an email. We have a newsletter. We have our own YouTube channel. Uh, so if you type in Ibis Power uh, on YouTube, you will find us. Uh, you will find clips about the installations. Uh, we were actually being broadcasted on national television. So, um, yeah, if you go on Twitter, if you go on, on LinkedIn, um, you, you, you can, well, you can nearly find find us everywhere yes <laughs> so <laughs> amazing amazing yeah so you know where to find them guys um, yeah when I get back to Canada happy to uh, chat or, or introduce you to these guys see if we can bring it back to Canada for the rest of the world you know where to find them here in Utrecht yes Utrecht. I got it Utrecht uh, <laughs> in the Netherlands um, Alexander and Bart thank you so much for showing me and taking the time today yep. uh, especially on your weekend really appreciate it and uh, yeah, look forward to keeping in touch and I'm excited to see uh, what the future has in store. Hope you guys enjoyed that. It was really great to talk with Alexander and Bart. Great meeting them, learning more about Ibis Power and the Power Nest, Power Nest product. Uh, hope you're as interested in it as I am. Uh, it was really great to learn about it. Um, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. This is my first sustainable, sustainability energy vlog. Um, here out today in the Netherlands. It's been really great exploring the cities and some of the things that they're doing here with regards to renewable energy. Um, happy to continue this vlog, uh, traveling to different cities, different countries to show what the rest of the world is doing when it comes to bringing sustainable energy solutions um, to communities during a very exciting time, 2018, where, you know, Sustainable energy is becoming cheaper, more realistic. We're getting better at it. Uh, more people are coming on board with the ideas and I wanna share these ideas with you. If you have any more ideas on uh, things I th you think uh, maybe in your home city or in your hometown that you think should be showcased on this vlog, be happy to hear about it, share with it with the world and come visit you and uh, talk about it a bit more. Um, again, please subscribe, uh, comment below, um, all the support is greatly appreciated. All the information here again with the regards to the Ibis Power and the Power Nest. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you look more into it. 
And uh, yeah, really excited to see these Ibis power structures coming up on a building near you.